Today I'm going to show you how to make something I've never made before. Beef oxtail. Hello and welcome. If you're new, my name's Karen and my husband Dan and I are on a journey to become as self-sufficient as we possibly can before we retire. One of the things that we are doing is reducing our food waste. So we're going to continue on with that this week. Last week we made beef tallow that you can use for cooking and lots of other things. So if you missed that, I will link to it at the end. One of the other little used parts of cattle is the tail. And yes, beef oxtail is the tail of the beef. So when we talk about eating cattle nose to tail, this is literally the tail. And I want to try out some of these recipes because if we do get our own uh, beef cattle to raise and butcher, this is one of the things that I'll be able to use. I had heard that beef oxtail is actually one of the more tender and delicious meats that you can have, so we're going to try it out and see. Before we get into the recipe, just a word about where you get your beef oxtail. If you don't raise your own beef and butcher your own beef, you can buy beef oxtail at the grocery store at certain meat counters. The place that I found that sold beef oxtail in town at a grocery meat counter wanted $12 a pound for beef oxtail. I thought that was a little bit ridiculous because it's one of the lesser known uh, cuts of beef that you can make. So Dan called the butcher that's about 20 minutes away from us and they were selling their beef oxtail for $5 a pound. So be sure if you're going to um, make a beef oxtail recipe that you kind of shop around for prices before you buy some. For this recipe, four to six pounds of oxtail will give us a full pot of beef oxtail. I'm using somewhere between five and six pounds. So my plan for the oxtail is to get a meal out of the meat, but then also save the leftover bones and cartilage to put in bone broth. So that's another video that's gonna be coming up is how to make some good beef bone broth. And the cartilage parts of the beef oxtail will give our bone broth a deeper flavor as well as adding collagen. The first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also use a slow cooker and I'll get to those instructions too as we go on here. I patted the beef oxtail to remove any moisture so that when I sear it, it will sear better in the pan. This will be cooking low and slow so that we can break down all of those delicious fibers and it will give us some tender meat. I will mention um, how you can do this if you're on the carnivore diet, but this time I'm gonna be making a ketovore recipe because I have neglected my wonderful husband and been only making uh, meat for the carnivore diet. So I'm gonna make a ketovore recipe this time. So I wanted to get all of the onions and garlic prepped before I started searing meat because that part is going to go pretty fast. I'm using one large onion and about five to six smaller cloves of garlic, but I feel like this recipe could have used more of both. So I would probably do two onions and probably six large cloves of garlic if I was to do this again. I just kind of rough chopped this this recipe also had one cup of red wine in it. Neither Dan nor I wanted to put the wine in the recipe, so we're just using an extra cup of broth. Then I got to searing the oxtail. I am using some of the beef tallow that I made last week to sear our oxtail. Try to get as many sides as you can for the sear because that all is going to add that much more flavor to our dish. You may have to sear it in batches depending on the size of your pan. I had to do two batches for mine. And notice that I am using a deep pan to do the searing in so that it will be easy 
to make the sauce in the same pan. Once seared, remove the meat to your Dutch oven or your slow cooker. Now in the same pan, I added my onion and my garlic, and I just want to saute this a bit until the onions get more of a translucent look. Once your onions and garlic are ready, go ahead and put a cup of broth into the pan, or if you're using a cup of red wine, put that into the pan to deglaze it and get all those yummy, yummy darker bits off the bottom. I'm using bone broth in mine, and just a word about shopping for bone broth. If you want pure beef bone broth with nothing else added to it, it's going to be a little harder to find. A lot of the bone broth that had good prices on them actually added onions and carrots and all of that into the broth as well. I only found one brand that I could use with the eating plan that I am on, and it was only made with beef bones, and that was an organic one called Primal Kitchen. But the thing about bone broth at the store is the Primal Kitchen brand that I can have was literally almost twice the price. So for this four cup or 32 ounce box, it was $7.50. So that's one of the reasons I wanna show you guys how to make your own bone broth next week. Once you're all deglazed, you will add another four cups of broth to the pan, and you'll also add a quarter cup of tomato paste. Some other things that you could add to this, if you can tolerate it, are peppercorns, bay leaves, fresh rosemary, all of that would be good in this dish. Once the tomato paste is incorporated, you will want to salt this to taste, and now you'll add that broth to your Dutch oven or to your slow cooker. So if you are making this and you're on the carnivore diet, you would not put in the onion, you would not put in the garlic, you would not put in the tomato paste, you would just use the broth and it will also work just fine. Now, if you're using a Dutch oven, what I've done with my Dutch oven is just put it back on the burner to let everything come up to a boiling temperature before I put it in my oven. Then just add the lid and put it into your preheated 300 degree Fahrenheit oven. And you're gonna let this braise for three hours in the Dutch oven. You don't have to look at it, you don't have to touch it, just let it cook. If I was putting this in a slow cooker, I would put this on low and I would cook it for eight to 10 hours. So here is what it looked like when it finished. It smelled fantastic. Now, if you want to thicken this sauce like you would a gravy or something else, you can do that just by thickening it with a roux of some flour mixed with cold water or however you best like to make your sauces and gravies. If you are on the carnivore or ketovore diet, you could actually probably thicken this sauce with maybe a little bit of cream cheese. Overall, this was super tender meat and it had good flavor, but I will say that it was difficult to navigate all of the cartilage and the bones to get those little morsels of tender meat. That would be my only complaint about using beef oxtail as a meal. And of course, Dan said that he would have preferred to also have some potatoes and carrots in the mix for more of a stew feel to the meal. So there was a lot left after we were done eating, a lot of good cartilage and bones that I can make my bone broth with. So be sure to watch an upcoming video on making bone broth and preserving it. I'm going to be pressure canning it this time, but there are other ways that you can make it last longer. I'm also going to try to post a video soon on the pickled eggs that I made Dan a couple of weeks ago. I know some of you were mentioning that you wanted to see how I made those. And of course, this Saturday, I will be posting a video with an update on my weight loss journey on the carnivore diet. Have a great, ending to your week and I'll see you Saturday.